All right. Welcome, gentlemen, to the next installment of the regular Zoom ACW Railroad Meets. And uh, one little housekeeping thing, uh, just want to remind people, even if you're tentative with wanting to attend the fall meet, please make your vote and uh, we'll see where it shakes out. So hopefully by end of the month, um, you all will get an email confirming which, the, which venue on October 6th through the 9th. If anybody ever has any questions, please feel free to contact me. Be great to see some people we have only seen on Zoom. That would be fun. But anyway, so with that, Mike is going to be doing a presentation that I am really excited about since we do these period turntables. And I and there was a couple of other guys that wanted to be here, but they couldn't. Uh, so with that, uh, you all know Mike. He's doing some great modeling in that Manassas area. And is it Matt Manassas, right, Mike? No, City Point. City Point. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, Ron does, yeah, Martinsburg, and Roger does Manassas. Cool. All right, so Mike, whenever you're ready, you can start your share. Okay. You guys see that? Yes, sir. All right, so uh, as Tom says, I'm uh, working on a C-point layout. I'm not too far along, but the uh, turntable is... Uh, mostly done so uh, I was asked to present on what I did on this turntable mm -hmm. so um, so I, I started with some pictures uh, some period pictures this is one I had colorized a few years ago uh, that so shows the turntable at City Point and that, that was kind of this is the main picture that kind of inspired me um, to do it um, but there are some other uh, images that are useful um, for modeling. Um, there's two other images e existent that show parts of the turntable. The one in the left, you just barely see it, but you know these high resolution scans of Civil War negatives, you can actually blow it up and get a little bit of details. It's right next to the engine house. Right. And then the one on top, you can get a kind of view on how the uh, walkway on the perimeter, I don't know the terminology of this stuff too much, but uh, got another view. And then this one is a, a Alexandria um, on the lower right. And it has a very similar uh, turntable constructed almost the same. There are some differences. The uh, wall around the perimeter of the turntable is actually uh, brick, uh, where at City Point, they just, it's just dirt. So there are some differences, but the kind of the main structure is the same. So these are kind of the four pictures I used uh, to kind of inspire the model. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, of course, just a little background on my layout. Like I said, I'm doing City Point. So there's this famous map of the City Point um, um, facilities here and, and the terminal and the, the, the wharfs and everything. And the uh, turntables up toward the left side there. And the way I'm doing this, I'm making this railroad modular. I don't have near the space I need to do the whole it, but I don't want to compress it too much. So I'm doing it in modules in case someday in the future I get more space. So I started with this module. The, the green outlines are basically modules, mm. um, how I broke up the thing. So the, the, um, each one of these fits on a four by eight sheet of plywood, mostly less, because four by eight's a lot to haul around. <laughs> but uh, so the module where the uh, uh, turntable is on is four by six and a half feet. And that's how the size of most of these modules are. Right. And this is that module with the turntable. Nice. Um, so I'm not compressing this part of the module at all. And this is kind of the heart of uh, my layout. And the tracks from here basically go everywhere. Right. So I set up the modules so I don't have any switches in between uh, modules or anything. Um, so that's kind of why it's broken up kind of funny. But anyway, 
Um, and here's my current space. I got enough space for about three modules. Yeah, and the turntable is going to be the one of the main things. The wharf will be uh, another neat thing. Um, and then oh. I might actually extend it on and do some uh, additional uh, things that aren't on the original map and compress those and squeeze those in just so it can fit in my limited space. Um, then uh, the electronics for the module, um, this is kind of a funny thing. I did a what's called a barn door tracker for astrophotography and I designed the electronics and it's oh. basically a little motor that moves the platform using a screw up and down that rotates and follows as the earth turns, it tracks the uh, stars. Wow. And so I had this thing, I never really used it. I used it once to take pictures, but I built some electronics and I got a motor and I got a screwdriver and I said, oh, maybe I can reuse this thing. Wow. So, so that's kind of a, I designed, I, I did all the electronics and the programming of this. So uh, I, kn I knew I'd have to tweak the program a little bit because it's a little different from uh, astrophotography, but I kind of started with this as the basis of the electronics. And they had a motor that would turn something and it had controls. So um, the other thing, and this is the key thing that really, because I was like looking at different commercial turntables and they're all for later modern stuff and they don't really have the look of a civil war turntable or that you know 19th century turntable mm. but i found in my stock of stuff i had this 316 inch brass rod and some 730 seconds tubing and you can see on the right where the rod fits perfectly in this tubing and it works perfect as a axle or a pivot um, so this was a key thing that I found that helped me make this turntable work. I love it. it cool. Is this rod and this tube and how they how well they uh, mesh together. So anyway, um, once I discovered that, I had to make this truss. And uh, so using the picture, mostly of the turntable at Alexandria. I basically transposed it using uh, Adobe, probably Adobe Illustrator at the time I was using, although it's gotten ridiculously expensive, so I don't use it anymore. But right. um, so basically, I basically took the image here and drew it. And then I basically printed it out to scale and basically cut the, uh, the lumber to, to size and use this as a template, just glued up two sides. So then I had two halves. And then if you look in the middle of the turntable in the base, there's a dark area. Well, I put a, a little block of wood in there to act as the support for the pivot. So I drilled a hole for the 7 16th inch rod dead center down the middle of it. And so everything, actually the, 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 uh, the rod, not the tube. So the rod goes through that piece of wood and then I built around it the, um, the, the cross beams. Hmm. And uh, so that's kind of how I got the basic truss constructed nice and i like the idea of boxing that tube in so it, yeah i like that idea i might oh yeah i mean i i mean that and then painting it black you really don't notice it right under there so uh, uh, the key thing here is the the bogies the arms coming out the supporting the wheels on the end have to be perfect equal distance from the center pivot and it's from the wheels, not from the end of the wood. So mm -hmm. from the center of each wheel to the pivot has to be perfectly the same for all four wheels. Right. Because the distance is not to the, uh, you know, the end of the wood, it's to the wheel. Are you the, gonna be uh, speaking to how you built, 
Will you be speaking to how you built the bogeys? I think that's the next slide. Okay. Um, anything else here? Oh, and then the, the, the spacing between the two uh, beams going across, because I built two beams and then connected them together is size for HO scale track. So the tracks like right on top, whoops. The tracks like right on top of the beams, just like it should be. Mm -hmm. so, um, okay, I guess the bogey might be next. Sorry. Okay, so the other thing is you gotta understand me. I kind of I like to use what I have. You know, I got scrap wood for various projects, and what I used to build the pit was uh, five layers of five millimeter uh, Luan, which is underlayment. I had for some project around the house, and the only reason why I used that is it was the right thickness. And I had it. Hmm. And I basically used a bandsaw to cut the outside circle. Mm -hmm. um, you can use a jig very easily to cut a circle on a bandsaw, or at least the outside circle. And so I put the bottom, well, you'll see in the future that the bottom is a bigger square overall. But then I've got three layers of uh, Luan cut in like donuts coming up. And that forms the pit. And then in the middle, you can see a little disc right under the center of the, uh, um, the bridge. Center of the bridge, whatever you call it. There's a little piece, a little circle there. That's kind of to raise it off the ground because I'm going to fill that in and model it. So I didn't want the bridge dragging in the dirt. Right. Um, and then the inside holes, you can see they're kind of rough. I cut those out with a, I just drilled a hole and then ran around with a jigsaw. Because I'm modeling this as sand, it really wasn't critical. Um, and then I rounded it off with a quarter round bit in a, um, you know, router just to kind of smooth it off and make the modeling later on a little easier. Um, so it's kind of hacked this thing together. I stacked and glued these four pieces together. Um, and like I said, I've got in the middle there a little disc and I put a tube in there that the rod goes in. Mm. So the tu tube is acting as a bearing on the inside of that um, wood disc. And then the track on the, oh, I don't know if I had another slide to talk about the track, but um, let me just go ahead. Yeah, the rail and the bogeys. So, so the distance from the center pivot to the rail is equal to the truss. So this was really the hardest part is getting that rail perfectly circular. Mm -hmm. And I kind of, what I did is I pre-bent it. Mm -hmm. I think I ran it through some kind of bending jig or something just to kind of get it approximately. And I used some uh, high school math to figure out how long a piece I needed to get the diameter I needed. Wow. And then I kind of tweaked it a little bit. And then I, you can see the solder joint on the right side of this picture where I soldered it together. But it was pretty hard to get the uh, distance right so that the bogeys, the wheels, are riding right on the uh, rail all the way around because it has mm. to be you know, pretty well centered. And the circle has to be pretty even. Those wheels have flanges? Uh, I don't know. It's not critical. OK. Um, the, the way the, uh, the bridge is riding on that center disc, it really doesn't even, the wheels don't even really have to touch the uh, Rail? rails. Although they give the appearance of touching. They oh, the wipers. Be. And I did, yeah. And so the pickup, 
I put some wipers under there for pickup for one of the rails on each end. And then the other rail, I got pickup going through the center up uh, uh, rod. Right, 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 right. So that's how I powering that thing. Um, and this picture, you can kind of see the pickups, but if, on the layout, you really can't see the pickups at all. Right. And um, then the way, yep. Last question. Um, what size wheels did you use and where did you get them? Okay, so this is something I want to improve right now. I just put okay. some, picked up some freight car wheels off of, of a scrap box. I picked up an axle, cut it in half, just some, from okay. some modern freight car wheels. I want to put some more prototypical wheels on there, but I haven't got around to it. So it's, I would like to, you know, I'd like to put some spoke wheels like you can see on the oh. real thing. I haven't done that yet. Um, and then the way these wheels are mounted in here, I put cut a little groove on the bottom of the beam. And then I've got a piece of brass. It's nailed and glued there. It's like holding them up in there. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so the, the wheels themselves are not picking up power. No, uh, and you you could do it. You well, I was that. just uh, you know, if the wheels are not picking up power, I was thinking, well, aren't there some wagon wheels out there with spokes on you could get? You're not going. You don't need the flanges. Right. Yeah, I I could I'm just, I could look around. I haven't looked into that. That's one of these things that. I've got so many other projects. I kind of got this working and I, I've moved on a little bit, but yep. these wheels will just pop out because they're just some brass, essentially brass shim stock holding them up and they're only packed down on one side. So they just pop out of there. So it'd be real easy to change the wheels. And you can see the wipers there. Right. And, you know, if I had metal wheels, I could pick up do the pickup with the wheels, but you really don't notice the wipers. And they're, the thing's buried in the pit. Um, I talked about pickups. That's most of this slide. Now, mounting this thing on, if you look here, there's a square with one corner mm -hmm. cut off, but it's essentially a square. And the donuts are glued on the top of that square, the three donuts. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so the way the, the thing's suspended, it's actually hanging under the layout. I got three bolts hanging down from the top of the layout. And they basically, uh, and then I've got these uh, nuts here, and that's how I get the height right so that the bridge, the track on the bridge is matching the track on the layout. So I can just, if I'm a little low or one side or whatever, I can just tweak the, uh, the nut in to raise it up or adjust it nice. or whatever. Nice, yeah. Um, I did have one little issue. Um, <clears throat> this motor on one side is kind of heavy, so it's tending to tip the whole thing. So if you look on the upper right, I've got some wedges holding it, so it's um, mm -hmm. not flopping up. That's probably not an issue anymore now that it's seen it, but to get it originally set up so that the track was at the right height, um, it this thing basically, you know, you know, put, put it up under the layout and then, you know, not to move it up or down to get it tweaked right. And you can see in the center here, you can see one of the feeds for the power to the center rod. And the other one's going up through the side, just on the outside of the circle. So to drive 
the turntable. I've got a, uh, another circle. Whoops, I keep hitting this thing. All right, I got another circle and then a flat, larger Luan bead. It's a three quarter inch piece of uh, plywood or something. That's the other circle. And then a little piece of Luan to keep the belt from falling down underneath. Um, the thing, I think I got a better picture coming up. And then the stepper motor here is hanging on the same platform that the donuts are sitting on top of. So mm -hmm. I got a better picture coming up that shows you kind of how, how it's doing. And then across the bottom of the thing, I've basically got a bridge on the bottom side that has another tube that the brass rod goes into. So I got a brass rod or brass tube in, in that piece of uh, uh, three quarter inch. That's actually a piece of flooring I had laying around, but <laughs> um, so that's, and then I soldered in, oh, here's the side view of it. Uh -huh. So you can see in the bottom, I actually soldered in the rod so the rod can't go all the way through. And then I soldered the thing. And then to keep, and you can see the, the donut or the disc here, the drive disc, you can see the two layers. One's a little wider than the other to hold it on there. And I don't have to worry about the top because the, the bottom of the layout kind of keeps the, the band from going up. So it just rides on that nicely. But to keep the uh, thing to rotate, I put a little hole in there and put a screw in there and it locks into the axle. It's going up and down to the bridge. Uh... And that keeps it from slipping. So let me, let me just get this straight. So the tube, not the rod, but the tube is fixed with that screw, but the rod rotates. No, the uh, tube doesn't extend to where that screw is. The tube's just in this bottom piece of wood, and then it's on that disc at the top. So there's, okay. two, I think the next picture might help. Uh, let me go ahead. Here, this picture will help. So oh. Two brass tubes and a rod going up and down in the middle. And then I got a drive wheel and that screw's going through the drive wheel into the rod. Got it. So that it'll pivot. Got it. Yep. So that's what, and this thing's been really stable. Um, I'll just... Anyway, so let me go back a bit. If any, yeah, if anybody has any questions or anything, feel free to ask. So here shows the side view of the stepper motor. And this has a little, uh, I forgot, I jury raked a little piece of, uh, the drive bell is actually a piece of inner tube from one of my bicycles that I cut the width and I used contact or rubber cement to um, set the length. And you can see how it runs over there and it's, it's been okay. Um, I think something that wasn't so stretchy would probably be move things a little better, but it, it works out okay. Wow. Now the other thing I did was when I put that set screw in there to hold the set screw to the axle, I lift up the drive disc a little bit so it's not dragging on the uh, wood on the bottom. Mm. So it's kind of fl floating above that just slightly. So that reduces friction because this rubber uh, inner tube stretches very easily. And you can also see the uh, bolt I put down there to set the height. And you can see the outside of the uh, donuts. Right. So, but now that I've seen it, so you'd think I could just take this out, but now that I've seen it, if I ever want to move this or put this on a different layout, I'd cut the whole layout apart. Right. And just take it as a unit because this is kind of in there now. 
Got it. Wow. Yeah, nearly electronics. Um, I could spend probably three hours going over this, uh -huh. stuff, but this MRC auto reverse module I had from a layout that I had 15 years ago. Right. And that, that thing works excellent. Yep. I got um, one. Yeah, it works really good. Um, this little uh, controller, you can see it's dusty. It was sitting around for so many years before I repurposed it from the astronomy thing. But it's got two AVRs. Um, those are the same processors that are used in Arduinos, except I started using these things before Arduinos existed. So I kind of have my own set of libraries and software methodology. So I never learned to use Arduinos because it's just easier for me to use what I already did. But I basically have one processor that controls the uh, lighting or the LEDs, the mm -hmm. display, and another one that senses the buttons and drives the uh, motor. And it's mm. a stepper motor. It's basically got eight wires going to it. It's got, there's four wires coming out, four control bits coming out of the main controller going to uh, an inverter that inverts say positive and negative so there's eight controllers go eight control bits going into this half h driver and that controls the uh, stepper motor wow but i did not this thing i have not changed from the turntable at all uh except the software i've practically completely rewritten mm. from what i was doing for astronomy but um i've got I designed some inputs originally on this thing. It was to do limit stops for the astronomy thing when it got to the top or the bottom. But I changed it so they can be used as I could put remote um, uh, switches on here so I could control it from somewhere else on a layout if I wanted. And just happened to have that those inputs. And then wow. the LED controller, I could potentially with very well. This also acts as a clock. So I have a way to set the time and it displays the time. And I could, so you could set the clock to any time you want. I could potentially put in a fast clock type thing if you, you were interested in that sort of thing. Um, but I could potentially extend the uh, display out to different places on the layout to have the time of day display elsewhere in the layout. Oh, that's um, cool. That's cool. I had never done that, but it wouldn't be too hard. So that's kind of electronics. Um, the stepper motor commands are pretty simple. You can go either direction and there's three speeds either direction. Since I wrote all the software, I could change that any way I wanted, but um, that's what it's currently at, and I'm pretty happy with it. Yep. So we did this um, tabletop. The pits under the table, you can see the screws coming down and holding up the pit. Yep. And then the motor supports coming off the uh, bottom of the, you know, the base of the pit. Mm-hmm. And then there's that piece of wood across there to, and the brass tubes to keep everything stable. I'm sorry, I might have missed this, but what'd you say you used to make the pulley for the drive wheel? It's just a circular piece of wood. I just cut it out with the bandsaw. Okay. I cut two of them, actually. If you look at it, this one, this one you can see there's two of them glued together. Okay. And the, the bottom one's a little wider, just to keep the band from riding off the bottom. Right. And I don't have, I, you could potentially put a second one on top, just to guide it. I haven't needed to. I think the angle of the motor to that, it's just not going to run off. Oh, here's a different view. Right. Um, anyway, so here's 
Uh, I've got some commands. So just a little more on the electronics. So I flash the display quickly when it's in, you're entering the time. Flash is, flash is slowly when it's moving. No flash means it's waiting for input. So hmm. it's very simple. And there's two key switches and you see this view is the current button. One turns you one way, the other turns you the other way. Mm -hmm. if, if you want to turn one way, if you want to slow down, you push the other way. So if you're going like full speed counterclockwise, to slow down, you push the slot clockwise button and it'll slow down one notch. You push it three times, you'll be stopped. Wow. So it's very simple to use. Um, and then if you push both switches together, you can enter the time. And you push, if you're in the enter time and you want to get back out and run the turntable, you just push both together again. So it's Amazing. pretty simple. <laughs> uh, okay. Scenery. Uh, Pretty much you use scale lumber to support the perimeter walkway modeled on the original design. Uh, to make the deck, I use 132 inch, 132nd balsa wood. And if you look on the lower right of this picture, what I did was I went into Adobe Illustrator and made a circle and some rays out. And then I printed it out and in scale size, and I just use that as a template to cut the uh, balls of the size. Wow. It just made it easier because I'm not that good at this precision modeling like you guys are. <laughs> <laughs> it, okay. it gave me something to work with anyway. Right. Um, and then as you look at the pit here, I feel I used uh, this plaster of Paris in poured it in, you know, mixed it up. Pour, the, the, of course, the bridge wasn't in there. Right. The truss wasn't in there. But I think I had something in that hole, so it didn't, oh, probably put some tape down over that little black. You can see the little black disc in the middle. Yep. I think I tried to avoid getting any uh, plaster. So I just put plaster to smooth out. Oops. Keep hitting that. There we go. So to smooth out the, uh, uh, the bottom. Yeah. And then my favorite uh, thing for dirt is actually some baseball diamond clay I have, which I sifted and baked on a charcoal grill to kill any nasties. And I glued it down with probably Elmer's glue or wood, you know, plain wood glue. Mm -hmm. um, so and those those are uh, are those the levers or that turn the table when the guys want to move it? Yeah, I just took a, a paper clip and bent it <laughs> inside there. Cool. I, I'd like to model a little guy that's pushing oh. on it. And kind of attach his hand, you know, attach his hands to the uh, to the bar there. But I right. Got to there. I think that'd be very doable. <laughs> I, I had a uh, a I'm friend sure. that's a double E over, and he says, "Oh, we should have a way to uh, have the man pop up from underneath and grab hold of the bar <laughs> and <pull> it around." <laughs> <laughs> And I said, now you're getting too carried away. Get one of those little guys off the uh, Bachman uh, hand car. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Excellent idea. Okay, so I have a little demo here. Oh, yeah. before I had DCC uh, 
back when I was doing this, I didn't have a control jack. I don't have wireless. I didn't have a control jack where the uh, turntable control was. So I had to be running back and forth. So is this at your slow speed or your intermediate? This is the fast speed. I, I don't love know it. how fast the real tape turntable moves. I don't think they move too fast. It's about like this, I would think. If that one guy's, you know, maybe there's two guys slugging this thing around. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. I think I have seen a video of the DNL Museum. They right. Have one right. Yeah, there was there's one some video. videos online of the uh, DNO turntable. Uh, I slowed down a little. Slow down. There you go. Now this. Wow, that's sweet. Now this, I don't have the rails lined up right. That's another project I have to, to get it. The rails on this end should line up perfectly and it's a little off. Well, I, I can tell you from personal experience, I have three of those like that on each one of my turntables <laughs> and I'm living with it. <laughs> yeah, I probably lived with that a long time. I got other fish in the kettle. That there you go. Cook. Good, glad to hear you say that. Wow. That... I'm actually working on the uh, engine house. It's probably about half done. Mm. I took this one a little while, this uh, video a little while ago, but. Nice. That's, uh, I think that's all I've got. And that other structure in that previous slide. That's, that's the a, car shop? That's the car repair shop, yeah. Cool. Nice. I, I scratch built that. Wow. That's cool. Dang, go on, man. So, um, I mean, it, the craftsmanship that you do with this electronics just blows my mind. I mean, you know, um, I feel like I'm walking on the moon when I'm listening to you talk about that stuff. Um, I, I'm, I'm just happy to be able to figure out, you know, what's the positive and what's the negative. Right. Wow. Um, let's see. So, wow. And it looks like underneath your platform, you actually built like those little uh, trestles. Yeah, I built those separately. They're, uh, yeah, I guess they're called trestles, su supports or whatever. I built those and put them all around. That looks great. And I put the decks. Now, the one thing I did on the, the balsa wood. The decks, I there's one thirty second balsa. Balsa is really soft. Too soft. You get yeah. the uh, impression of planks. I don't know what expert modulars do, but I just scribed it with a a pick. And you kind of gave a pretty good impression of planks. Yep, yep. I've done that. I've seen other modelers do it too. It. Uh... It works quite well. It's a little bit of work, but you know, if you like the craftsmanship and doing that, I think it's uh, definitely an alternative. It's a lot easier than that board and batten uh, siding <laughs> in the car shop. <laughs> I'll bet. Yep. Yep. Wow. So um, the the device that the astrological ph photograph unit. Yeah. Would you, what was that called? The who? The Schumer? Astro Tracer. Oh, right. The Astro Tracer. Wow. I never heard of it. And it's too weird, you know. You say, yeah, I had this, I had this laying around. I'm like, yep, I got things laying around too, but, you know, nothing quite that uh, exquisite. Jeez. Yeah, well, I never made use of it and it was sitting there. Yep. So that so you just took that electronic device and converted it to work for the turntable essentially. Right. I just took the motor and the electronics and I reprogrammed it so it could turn either the, the way the the barn door tractor it turns at a certain rate to raise that thing to like pivot so it right. follows the stars as the earth rotates. Right, right, right. So 
so I had I did a bunch of calculations in Excel on how fast to rotate and the angles change as the thing gets out. So I was adjusting speed. It was very complicated. And this is actually much simpler. And right. then I had a fast speed for um, un unwinding it. But cool. That anyway. too. That's great. That's great. You know, I would. When I first saw this, I was telling Mike guys that uh, when I looked at the little building on the right, right in that broken up. Uh, I said when I first saw Mike pull up that image, and I looked at the building on the right and that tree, I thought it was modeled. Oh. And I thought, the, whoa, uh, so type uh, studio. Yeah, but I was thinking, wow, he got a lot done. <laughs> uh, that one actually, that spot, unfortunately, I, it's not going to fit on my layout. But, oh, but I think I that's like okay. I would have that little building there. Yeah. It doesn't yep. quite fit. Yeah. But, Looks like there's, I don't know if those are busted off trees, but right where the dirt meets the grass to the left. I, I was thinking, were those fence posts? But no, they're probably just busted up trees. Yeah. Wow. In the back. Any that other cool. questions, guys, or, or suggestions, too? I'm always trying to learn. You can stop your share unless somebody needs to see something or ask us a question about something. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. Well, right now that's the uh, highlight of the layout, but uh, maybe I do have a question. I get to be working on the wharf. <laughs> I do have a question. Um, when you connected your wire to the tube slash um, rod. Is it, did you solder it to the rod or the tube? Well, there, there's, that tube in the bottom is plugged with a piece of rod. So the rod on top doesn't go all the way through. Right. So I just soldered it to the uh, rod, but it doesn't matter because the, the rods like on the top, it's on the top, on the trestle side, it's soldered to the rod. On the bottom, it's soldered to the tube, but there's enough contact between the two that I don't have any issues with intermittent uh, connections or anything. Because the rod's like spinning okay. in the tube, right? Yeah. So on the bottom, it's soldered on the tube, essentially. Right, right. But the rod's spinning in the tube. And the, the kind of, had zero problems with that part of it uh, with intermittence or anything. That's great. That's great. Well done, man. That was that's a brilliant piece of work. Oh, geez. So DC, uh, any did you pick up any tips? I thought it was great. Thank you. I like how you rigged the wipers on the on the rails underneath. I've got one wiper, and I think two might help a lot. And then the other thing is I have a brass tube that they installed. It's a diamond turntable. And then they put like a, a half inch or three eighths of an inch piece of strap brass and they wrapped it around the tube. And that's supposed to make the contact. Okay. But what I found over time is that brass wiper doesn't really hug the brass rod. And I'm trying to figure out a way to get a wedge in there to keep it attached. And uh, like to your point, if you want to do something on the turntable, you got to take the whole thing out. And I'm like, oh, I dread thinking about doing that. So I think I'm just going to try to keep working wedges in between the uh, the, the wiper and uh, the truss piece to push it against the rod. Yeah. Now to take the uh, bridge off, all I have to do is there's that one set screw in the wheel. If I unscrew that, I can pull the bridge off. Oh, that's a plus. 
that's a plus. So I might do that someday and get the track a little straighter <laughs> so right. it lines up. But No, that was great. That was fantastic. Thank you. Uh, I, I was going to ask, Ron, what, what are you thinking of in terms of turntable? Are you going to use a particular brand or? Yeah, the diamond's already being shipped. Cool. What style? The 51 foot wood. Mm. Right, versus the, uh, what do you call it? Where there's a frame, a box frame around the center. The A frame? No, it's not an A frame. Um, it's a... Gallows. The gallows. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, no, it's not a gallows. Jesus, what a horrible name. Um, and you know, I, I ordered it in December and they're just now getting it to me. He called me like Wednesday and said, we're shipping it. Yay, we haven't forgot yet. So do they tell you how to wire that thing up or is that something you're going to figure out? Uh, I'm going to crank it by hand. Okay. I have a hand crank. But you have to wire your rails. Oh, the, the rails? Yeah. No, I haven't thought about that yet. I'm not that far. I really consider what Mike's talking about, a tube within a, a rod within a tube. That seems to make the most sense. But yeah, you'll figure it out. Yeah, um, what are you using for your crank, Ron? They sell one. It's Diamond, not like I, Diamond it's, sells a, a crank kit. Oh, they do. It's the same one I have. It's a round disc and it has that little handle. Yep. And, and you can leave the handle off, which is what I did because people kept, well, me, <laughs> I kept on catching my yeah. shirt and stuff on it. And I almost ripped the thing out. I'm like, no, well, these are coming off now. <laughs> yeah, I just decided I was going to make everything manual. Manual ground throws, manually do the. You're not using the harp stands, though. Uh, not no, the ones that. I've got, I don't think it'll work. We'll I'll right. figure it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I get that. I like, you know, it's, the, uh, I forget what they're called, but they're these hand throws that go, I've seen it on guys' lays out, layouts from the, you know, do 50s and such. And it's a little throw bar. It goes, it flips over. I forget yeah. what they're called. Huh? Yeah, they're on sale for right now. What are they? Can't remember what they're called, but I just got a little notice saying they're on sale. Yes. You can buy a pack of like eight of them for hand fourteen throw. bucks. I'd have to look. Nice. Yeah, hand throws. Well, I forget what they are, but yeah, they were real nice. What? what? I was just trying to remember the company. Well, no, I saved it on my red. Save it on my iPad. Ground throws. Is that right? Red caboose ground throws. Red yeah, caboose ground throws. Yeah. Thank you, Andy. Sure. Yep, that's right. Yeah, they'll be good. They'll be good. Cool. Uh, <laughs> so anybody have anything to share? Any updates? Any questions? All right. So um, I'm, I'm looking at maybe, and I, this is for those of you that are building, uh, July for layout updates. Is that cool? Or maybe wait till the fall? That's for Ron and DC primarily. Since I've got you live, I'm looking to see where I can get you to commit. <laughs> um, yeah, July would be pretty good. I could, okay. I'll, hopefully I'll have the backdrop all painted by then. Okay. Fall would be better for me. Yeah, we'll wait. Yeah, because LeBron has still got his stuff going yeah. on and yeah. That's cool. Cool, good. All right, gentlemen. Thank you, Mr. Willigal. Really appreciate Thank the time you, you put into that. Thank you. Brilliant Thank you. work, man. Uh, it's it's great to have you within the group and and share your um, techniques and tips. Great stuff. Well, and your modeling. I'm just fumbling my way through this. <laughs> hey, hey, Mike. Do what's what's the resolution of the uh, your your engine on the current table? What's the resolution of that image? How many megabytes? Uh, I could probably right. do a better one. Uh, you're looking for an image, right? I can probably do a better one. Um, 
Right now, my basement's in pieces because I'm putting in a new floor. Oh, boy. But it should be done in a few weeks, and then I can put things back together and probably get you better. It's pro it, I took it with an iPhone, so it's pretty good. Okay. Um, yeah, that, that, that's the type of image I told you I, I was looking for. That would be a good one. I know you were yeah, concerned. That's the best one I have right now for the layout. But um, I like it. If 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 you if you like it, we can use that one, or I might be able to do something better, or do a little Photoshop for some of the background stuff on it. Oh, good. Oh, thank All you. right, guys. Until next time, be well, stay healthy, and. Keep on building. All the best. Y'all take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Good night. Bye, John.